How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the new discoveries in regards to the formation of supermassive black holes. The giant black holes in centers of various galaxies that even today are sometimes kind of difficult to explain. But based on a lot of different observations, researchers behind some of the recent studies potentially provide us with just enough evidence to finally explain how some of these objects can become hundreds of millions and even billions of solar masses in a relatively short time. And here some of these explanations even try to explain a somewhat famous paradox when it comes to black holes, the so-called final parsec problem. The problem that was established back in 2003 and that you can read about in one of the studies in the description. But in a nutshell, it's the problem in regards to how massive black holes seem to be unable to collide once they reach a distance of approximately 3 light years away from one another. We've actually talked about this in more detail in one of the videos in the description, but it's a paradox because it doesn't really have a very good solution, or I guess it didn't up until recent observations. And so let's talk about some of these studies and what they discover about supermassive black holes. And while today scientists believe that to grow, a supermassive black hole can do one of maybe two things either collide with other black holes or suddenly absorb a lot of gas from somewhere in the galaxy, which is usually very easy to observe and produces a really huge accretion disk. And that's because when massive black holes start to consume gas, they basically always emit strong X-rays. With more gas absorbed, you expect more X-rays to be produced as well. And so here, by collecting data from approximately 20 years of observations by various X-ray telescopes, including Chandra, Newton, and Erosita, the researchers behind the recent study were able to observe X-ray emissions from many different galaxies in order to estimate the overall growth of supermassive black holes as you go back in time and observe earlier and earlier universe. And while on average, we expect a typical black hole to consume about one solar mass every single year. Although this particular mass will depend on the total mass of stars in a galaxy. More stars, more gas, and thus more mass absorbed by the black hole. But here the observations suggest that billions of years ago, the supermassive black holes grew much faster, most likely because there was just a lot more gas. And more importantly, more and more supermassive black holes were actually born during this time compared to the modern universe where supermassive black holes no longer spring into existence because for the most part, the universe is a lot more calm. And so about 8 billion years ago, the number of supermassive black holes seems to have completely stabilized. Now this is based on actual observations and not simulations, and so here the data is really hard to argue with. And so by looking at a sample of approximately 8,000 active galactic nuclei and 1.3 million normal galaxies, based on X-ray observations, the researchers came to the conclusion that accretion or absorption of gas seems to be the main mechanism that produces supermassive black holes, with the black hole collisions being a relatively distant second. And so here the data suggests that, for the most part, supermassive black holes actually grow by absorbing gas and not so much through collisions. And so as a comparison, even if a black hole grows by one solar mass per year through accretion, it seems to acquire the same mass through collisions only once every several decades. And so about 90% of the mass in a typical supermassive black hole seems to actually come through the process of accretion. But it does not explain how exactly this happens and how these mechanisms work. And that's where the two additional studies kind of try to tackle this as well. And so in that first study based on the accretion disk, we actually discovered something really interesting from a galaxy you see right here. ESO 320-G030. Here by analyzing this galaxy with ALMA telescope, the scientists discovered an extremely powerful rotating magnetic wind that they actually think is helping this galaxy grow its central black hole. Now this galaxy is about 120 million light years away from us, but the way it's facing us makes it very easy to analyze everything. And it's a very active galaxy that seems to form approximately 10 times more star than the Milky Way galaxy, and also seems to have a lot of galactic wind. And here the main focus was on molecules of hydrogen cyanide, because it's just a little bit easier to see. And while the discovery is of a very large magnetic wind that seems to be rotating around the center, with the magnetic field helping the gas move away from the galaxy, but also creating a spiral that then basically feeds the central black hole. 
And what's more intriguing is that this is actually the exactly same process that generally grows stars. In a typical young star, powerful magnetic fields, usually produced by the accretion disk as well, play a very important role in basically feeding the young star or in throwing away huge amounts of mass away from the accretion disk and away from the star. So there's actually a really huge interplay of magnetic fields here that then produces different types of stars. And a very similar process seems to happen in a lot of different active galaxies around central massive black holes. And so these very powerful swirling winds, guided by the magnetic fields, seem to influence both the galaxy and the central black hole. And this interplay between gravity and magnetic fields generally is in balance, preventing various clouds from collapsing and preventing black holes from growing too fast. But sometimes gravity wins and sometimes magnetic fields collapse. And so that's when we actually get these active galactic nuclei, with galaxies potentially becoming things like quasars. But intriguingly enough, something very very similar is also visible right here in the Milky Way galaxy. We do seem to see remnants of magnetic fields as visible in this image produced by the Sophia telescope. And so these seem to be universal effects that basically apply to stars, galaxies, and most importantly are directly responsible for accretion disks in stars and around black holes either encouraging or preventing their growth. But that's of course discoveries about the accretion disk. As mentioned, the second type of growth when it comes to black holes is direct collision with other black holes. And interestingly, not so long ago, we discussed the discovery of this unusual vibration in the universe produced by gravitational waves. This was actually a huge discovery, and you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But in a nutshell, it potentially provided evidence for lots of different supermassive black holes orbiting around one another, producing these tremendous waves. But the problem is that we don't really know how supermassive black holes collide. I mean, technically, all of the observations from out there and all of the simulations so far do suggest that they have to collide. Otherwise, we'd be seeing a lot of binary black holes in a lot of different galaxies out there. And so somehow, the universe found a way to resolve this final parsec problem, and somehow black holes did find a way to collide. But the question was, of course, how? And well, as I mentioned in that video about the unusual vibration of the universe, the overall profile of these waves seems to be all over the place. There's no one single wavelength that seems to be stronger than others. However, if final parsec problem was an actual thing, and if a lot of supermassive black holes basically got stuck in that orbit forever, orbiting at three light years away from one another, we would actually expect an extremely specific wavelength which was not detected. And so, what exactly is happening here? And what's causing these black holes to cross this barrier and to basically come closer, eventually colliding? And well, here the explanation doesn't actually have evidence yet, but it is very interesting. And in essence, it involves the idea of self-interacting dark matter. A type of a dark matter that's been proposed previously to explain additional phenomena. And well, in this case, it potentially explains this as well. And so basically here the researchers found a kind of a link between dark matter particles and supermassive black holes. And so according to this recent study, supermassive black holes can easily merge into a single black hole if various dark matter particles interact with each other in a way where they're not necessarily dispersed by black holes, but stay in the same vicinity, forming a relatively dense halo that continuously interacts with these black holes over time. And though in previous explanations, this type of a halo is supposed to basically dissipate, thus preventing black holes from coming closer, using a specific type of an interacting dark matter particle, this problem seems to be resolved almost instantly. But because self-interacting dark matter particles are still just a hypothesis without actual evidence, we don't really know how likely this is. Nevertheless, just because it explains how black holes can collide, without enacting any additional unusual explanations, and also because clearly black holes do collide, as we don't actually see binary supermassive black holes anywhere around us, in some sense this explanation right now is possibly the best. And more importantly, it provides more clues about the nature of dark matter as a particle. And because this explains this unusual gravitational hum detected with gravitational waves, the hum or the vibration produced by millions of these supermassive black holes on the collision course, studies like this can finally help us bridge the gap between black holes, dark matter, and additional mysteries out there in the universe. 
Either way though, it's great to finally have actual evidence in regards to how supermassive black holes grow and evidence that shows us that for the most part it's really the accretion disk that seems to be driven by magnetic fields, but the second growth mechanism is through various collisions. And in this case the collisions could be potentially driven by dark matter surrounding various galaxies. Or at least that's the explanation for now as of July of 2024. I'm sure in the next decade or so some of these ideas might be reworked and some of these ideas might change. For now though, this basically makes sense. And so until future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.